Hello, this is Dr. Brown. In this video, we're going to go over the concepts you need to understand for test two. And we will be working a number of problems that illustrate these concepts. Problem one, we want to convert the angle to a decimal in degrees and round to the nearest uh, to two decimal points. Well, first of all, we need to understand that uh, 47 minutes equal 47 over 60 degrees, and 37 seconds equals 37 over 3,600 degrees. So to do this, 23 degrees, 47 minutes, 37 seconds will equal 23 plus 47 over 60 plus 37 over 3600. Put this in your calculator and you will get 23.7936 degrees and if you round it off to the nearest hundredth, you'll get 23.79. Problem two, we want to find the uh, length S, which is an arc of a circle with uh, the angle theta being Pi over 6 radians. Now the equation we need to use is S equals R theta, where theta must be In radians. This particular case, we're given uh, theta already in radians, so S is going to be R, which is seven yards, times theta, which is pi over six. And if you put theta in your calculator, um, you will get 3.665 degrees. Notice um, we don't see that here. We see 3.666. So it turns out there's probably a typo in, in the, this problem, but it's very close. Go ahead and pick this. And you'll find occasionally, but not, not very often, an error in some of these test banks. Now, Here we want to find the area of a uh, sector of a circle. And uh, if we have a circle, with an angle theta and a radius r, that the area of the circle is given by 
one half r square theta theta must be in radians notice we're asked for uh, the angle theta and notice the answers are in radians so we don't have to do any kind of conversion so uh, we're given that the area is 95 square feet. Plug that in and we get one half times R squared, which is 18 squared times theta. And uh, I'm gonna cross multiply here. Uh, we get 18 squared theta equals 2 times 95. So the angle theta in radians is going to be 2 times 95 divided by 18 squared, which is 0.5864. which we'll round off uh, to 0.59 radians. So the answer is A, 0.59 radians. Okay, number four, we want to convert the angle in degrees to radians and express the answer as a multiple of pi. Um, We have minus 105 degrees. And the way I always do this is multiply it by the right factor, which will cancel out the degrees. So we multiply this by pi radians for 180 degrees. So the key thing to remember here is that half of a circle, which is pi radians, is also 180 degrees. And notice if you multiplied this correctly, the degrees are going to cancel out and you're going to be left with radians. So in order to reduce this fraction, uh, I'm going to divide, first of all, top and bottom by 3, and we get minus 35 times pi over 60 and then divide by 5 and I get minus 7 pi over 12 uh, radians so that is answer third answer here Now, we're given here an angle in radians, and we want to convert it to degrees. So we write down the angle minus 8 over 3 pi, and multiply it times one hundred and eighty degrees. for pi radians. And notice the radians cancel out. The pi cancels out. Uh, the three goes in 180, 60 times. And we get minus 480 degrees, which is this answer.
Now we're given an irrigation sprinkler rotates at an angle of 160 degrees, uh, which is maybe about like this. And uh, theta is 160 degrees. And it radi uh, radiates or sprays a distance of 40 feet. So R is equal to 40 feet. And we want to find the area of the grass that uh, is irrigated. So here we use A is equal to one half R squared theta. And uh, we plug in one half R is 40, so we have 40 squared times 160 degrees which we need to convert to radians by multiplying by pi radians per 180 degrees. Now, all we need to do is put this expression in our calculator and we get Two thousand two hundred and thirty four point oh two feet squared, which is this answer. Now we're getting into some trigonometry, and in this case, we're working with a right triangle. And there's one thing you really need to understand when you set up a triangle is to label the sides and the angles properly. So let's draw a right triangle. And its angles are A, B, and C. And usually, if it's a right triangle, we let angle C uh, be the right angle of 90 degrees. And before you go on, go ahead and label the sides. The side opposite angle A is here, and uh, label that lowercase a. The side opposite angle C is a hypotenuse, label that in the side. Opposite angle B is lowercase b. And uh, we want to find the sine of angle B when B is equal to 9. And uh, C is equal to 10. Now, sine of B is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is going to be Nine over C and in this particular case we don't have to solve for anything else so I have to put nine over C which is ten. So sine of B is equal to nine tenths.
problem eight, we are given another right triangle. We want to find cotangent A where B is five and C is six. Let's draw the triangle again. With A, B, and C. Uh, side B we're given is five. Side C, given is six. And side A, we are going to have to find if we need it. And notice that uh, cotangent of A is equal to the adjacent over the opposite. which is adjacent of angle A is five. The opposite is going to be A. So we need to solve for A by using the Pythagorean theorem. And we get that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared plus b squared, which is 25, equals c squared, which is 36. So a squared is equal to 11, and a is, is equal to the square root of 11. So now we can say that cotangent of a is equal 5 over 8 which is the square root of 11, and we can rationalize the denominator by multiplying numerator denominator by the square root of 11. And so we get that cotangent of A is five square roots of 11 divided by 11, which is this answer. Now we're given that a point P is on the unit circle uh, and we want to find the tangent of T. Now, if you're on the unit circle, then the tangent of theta equal the tangent of T is equal to y over x. In this case, we've got y and x explicitly as the square root of 77 over 9 divided by 2 ninths, which is equal to the square root of 77 over 9 times 9 over 2 equal the square root of 77 over 2, which is third answer here. Number 10, we're given point on the unit circle, and we want to find the sine of the angle. So sine of the angle theta equals sine of the arc length t equals the y value, which happens to be minus 3 quarters. Number 11, we have a point on the unit circle and we want to find the cotangent. And uh, the cotangent of T is equal to one over the tangent of T. This is the way I remember it. 
is equal to 1 over the tangent of t is equal to y over x. So it's a reciprocal uh, of uh, y over x, which is equal to x over y. So um, the cotangent of t is equal to x over y. which is minus the square root of 11 over 6 divided by minus 5, 6. And this is equal to, obviously it's going to come out positive. Equal to square root of 11 over 5 would be the cotangent. Now we want to use the fact that the trigonometric functions are periodic to find the exact value of the expression here. And we want to find the tangent of 930 degrees. Notice that uh, Every time we go uh, around the unit circle, uh, the uh, function uh, repeats itself. Uh, so notice that uh, 930 degrees equals 360 plus 360. Uh, 360 twice is 720, leaving um, 210 degrees. Uh, so to find the tangent, 930 degrees is equivalent to finding the tangent of 210 degrees. And now if you look at the unit circle, uh, 210 degrees is this point on the unit circle. And we clearly see uh, the x and the y values. So this will be y over x which is equal to the y is minus a half and the x value is minus the square root of 3 over 2 and we see this is going to be a positive value again it's going to be 1 half going to flip the square root of 3 over 2 over and get 2 divided by the square root of 3. So this is equal to 1 over the square root of 3. And to rationalize it, we get the square root of 3 over 3. So the answer is answer 4 here. Now we've got a point minus 12 and 5 that's not on the unit circle, but it's on um, a circle with radius r. And the point is minus 12 and 5 the radius uh, we will are going to have to find 
we're given uh, that the x value is 5 and the y value is 12 minus 12. So notice we've got r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. r squared is equal to x squared uh, which is um, 12 squared or minus 12 squared plus y squared which is 5 squared so r squared is equal to 144 plus 25 equal 169 so the radius is equal to 13 and we want to find the cosine of theta will be equal to x over r which is the x value is minus 12 and the radius is 13 so cosine of theta is minus 12 13 Now, this problem, we're given that a function of x is sine of x and sine of, of uh, a is equal to minus one ninth. And we want to find the value of f of a plus f of a minus four pi plus alpha of a minus 2 pi. Now the sine function repeats every multiple of 2 pi. We're given that alpha of a is minus a ninth. Alpha of a minus 4 pi is going to be the same as alpha of a because that's just 4 pi backwards. Uh, so we get minus one ninth and a f of a minus two pi is going to be two pi away so it's going to be equal to f of a also so the answer is minus three over nine equal minus a third so answer a Number 15, we want to use our calculator to find sine of 21 degrees. And I would um, remind everybody that you need to, if when you're using your calculator, make sure you have calculator in the correct mode notice we're in radians now so we want to switch to degrees probably one of the biggest reasons sometimes people miss one of these problems is having their calculator in the wrong mode so we got it in degrees now and so now we want to find sine 21 degrees. Hit enter and we get 0.3583 and rounding this off to the nearest hundredth we get 0.36. Now, here we want to use a calculator to find secant of pi over 5. Now, these angles are in radians. Uh, and 
And notice now we need to switch back to the radiant mode. And seek it. Power five. Notice that secret is not in the calculator, but secret is one over cosine. So we want to calculate one over cosine pi over five. And put this in your calculator. We put one divided by cosine of pi divided by five. And you get 1.236, which we round off to the nearest hundredth and get 1.24. Now we're going to be talking about graphing the sines and cosine functions uh, and understanding what we mean by amplitude. Um, If we have um, a function y equal a sine of omega x or a cosine omega x, the period t is equal to pi over omega, and the amplitude always equal to the absolute value of a it's never negative okay here we want to find the period and so we have omega is equal to 5 so the period is simply 2 pi over 5 and that is this answer Now, in graphing sines, cosines, minus sines, and minus cosines, we need to realize that the sine function always starts out at zero, and then you see the sine wave, and it keeps on repeating every two pi. This is a sine, and the cosine always starts out at 1. So now we want to match up the sine function. And the sine function's got to start out with 0 and start increasing and that's this one so we are going to um, associate uh, equation one with the C the cosine function always starts out at one and that would be graph A, so 2 is associated with A. The minus sine function, of course, will start out at 0, but go downward. And so we associate 3 with B. 
And then finally, the minus cosine would be D. And so the answer is A here. 1C, 2A, 3B, 4D. Now we want to find an equation for the graph here. And um, the equation is going to be the amplitude. Now what is this? This is a cosine function. Cosine of omega x. And notice uh, we've got to figure out what the period is of this function. The period uh, is equal to, notice the distance between minus 3 pi and plus 3 pi. will be the period. So that would be 6 pi. You just see where the function starts at a given value and then goes back to that value and that's a period. And uh, so the period is 6 pi. And the period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So 6 pi omega is equal to 2 pi. So omega is equal to 2 pi over 6 pi equals 1 third. Now, we need to know what the amplitude is, and obviously the peak of this function uh, is, is 5. So the equation is y equals 5 cosine of 1 third x, which is answer A. Now, number 20, we have the current I in amperes flowing through an AC circuit at time t in seconds as shown below. So we have an equation that's 160 sine of 50 pi t. We want to know what is the period, what is the amplitude, and graph the function uh, over two periods. Um, you know that the period t is equal to 2 pi over omega equals 2 pi. Omega is 50 pi. That's whatever is multiplying the x or the t. which is 1 over 25. So we got the period is equal to 1 over 25 seconds. And the amplitude is absolute value 160 equal 160. And now we want to graph this. Um, notice um, I'm going to do it on the calculator, and I'm going to do it just by hand. It's a sine function. Its period is 1 over 25. So we know that this guy is going to repeat. And it's going to repeat 
not drawing this very beautifully, but uh, I guess you get the idea. Uh, and let's just use our calculator to get the rest of it. Um, use our calculator to get the rest of this. We're going to put this in our calculator. And we're going to, first of all, put it in the radian mode. Which it is, is in the radian mode. And we're going to put 160 sine of 50 pi times x. And now we need to set up the window. Uh, notice that this window is 3 divided by 25. Um, let me make that minus. We're going to start out at 0. We'll start out at 0. And we're going to go to 3 divided by 25. And the Y window is going to go from minus 160 In fact, let's go minus 280. To plus 280. And now we should see pretty much what we just Notice I didn't do the full minus 280. There's minus 280 to plus 280. Now I hit graph. And that is exactly what we see there. But in this particular case, we see uh, three periods of the, of the sine function. Number 21 is find an equation for this graph. Uh, notice that the amplitude is 4. And it's a sine function times minus 1. So uh, it would be minus 4 sine of omega x. And we need to know what the period is. Notice the uh, one full period is from minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi. or from minus pi to plus 3 pi, and that distance is 4 pi. So um, the period is equal to 2 pi over omega. 
period being 4 pi equals 2 pi over omega. So cross multiplying and we get omega equals 2 pi over 4 pi equal 1 half. So the equation is minus 4 sine of omega x, which is 1 half x. And that is answer B. Number 22 is a tr uh, state trooper is hidden 30 feet from a highway. He's looking at the traffic and looks uh, at where a truck is one second after a truck passes. Uh, and uh, he's 30 feet from the highway. And he measures an angle theta one second after the truck passes. If he measures 17 degrees, how fast is the truck traveling? Well, if we can figure out this distance x, for the given angle, we can figure out what the distance x is, then the speed would be uh, x uh, feet per second. So let's calculate x tangent of theta is equal to opposite over the adjacent, which is equal to 30 over x. And we said the angle is 17 degrees. So tangent of 70 degrees is 30 over x. So x is equal to 30 over tangent of 17 degrees equals put it in your calculator 98.13. So if that is in feet, Then in one second, he goes 98.13 feet. So the speed of the truck is 98.13 feet per second. And to find out what the speed of the truck is in miles per hour, that's feet per second. We need to multiply by 3,600 seconds. For 5,280 feet. Notice there are 5,280 feet in a mile, 3,600 seconds in an hour. Uh, so 3,600 seconds per hour and a mile is 5,280 feet. Notice our feet cancel out. And if we multiply 98.13 times 3,600 divided by 5,280, we get 66.9. Oh, miles per hour.
Now, if the angle is 27 degrees, how fast is the truck traveling? Um, that for 27 degrees, the distance he would have gone in a second is 30 over tangent. 27 degrees equals fifty-eight point eight eight feet. And since he does that in one second, he's traveling fifty-eight point eight eight feet per second, and if we want to convert that to miles per hour, we multiply that by 3,600 seconds per hour times One mile per 5,280 feet. Multiply all this out and you get 40.14 miles per hour. Now, the last question. Uh, the speed limit is 55 miles per hour and a speeding ticket is issued for speeds of five miles per hour or more. For what angle should the trooper issue a ticket? Well, he'll do it for speed um, equal or greater than 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour is 5,280 feet per mile times hour for 3,600 seconds, uh, and that is equal to 88 feet per second. So 88 feet per second is 60 miles an hour, and so we want to use the equation that x is equal to 30 over tangent of theta degrees, x is going to be 88 feet in that one second, equal 30 over tangent of theta. So tangent of theta equals 30 over 88. So the angle whose tangent equals 30 over 88, you can calculate that by saying that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 30 over 88, which is 18.82 degrees. Notice we're going to be doing inverse sine, cosine, tangenting, and uh, cotangent in the next lesson. But uh, this sort of gives you a preview of what we'll be doing in the next chapter, uh, where we get into inverse sines and cosines and inverse trig functions. Well, that is uh, the review video.